Hey everyone, this is First Horn Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad. Then it's just about a quarter to ten right now. It may not be a quarter to ten when you watch us, but that's when I record it. I want to give a quick update on what's happening with the weather overnight and tomorrow. A lot of questions on my Facebook and my Twitter page um, about what's going to happen here in the next uh, 24 hours. If you haven't gone to my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter, it's really the best way to keep up to date. Twitter's way better than Facebook. I know everyone's on Facebook, but you're not going to get all my updates. Facebook is going to filter them out. Go to Twitter. Even if you don't ever post to Twitter, just get on Twitter to follow me. Uh, right there, WX Brad, or a Google Plus, another great place. Uh, if you have a Google account, you can follow me there. But if you have to on Facebook, go to my page. Don't look in your news feed to get updates on what's happening. Here's the situation. A lot of folks asking about the severe weather threat. To me, it's really about the rain. The rain could arrive sooner than 5 to 8 a.m., but I think that's when the heavy stuff arrives. Rain will be heavy at times, and some thunderstorms during the day tomorrow, some could be severe. The severe threat's the questionable part. The flash flooding threat is not questionable. We are gonna have flash flooding across our area, and far more people will be impacted by flash flooding than will ever be impacted by severe weather tomorrow. I don't wanna downplay the severe weather threat because it's there, but here's the deal. You're nine times more likely tomorrow to be impacted by flash flooding than a severe thunderstorm or a tornado. So please take the flash flooding threat the most serious. Here's the flash flood watch. It's been extended to many counties. It, it pretty much includes all the Charlotte metro area, the upstate of South Carolina. And this runs through 6 a.m. on Friday because we're likely going to see uh, flooding going into tomorrow night, depending on how fast the system moves through. Here's the deal. This thing isn't missing us. If you look very carefully in northern Georgia right now, you notice something going on. There's a little swirl right there. There's a little low pressure system. And what's happening is that low pressure system is pulling in deep tropical moisture from the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. We're talking about precipitable water, which is the amount of water in the atmosphere above your head, around two inches. I mean, it's gonna be a huge amount of moisture that's gonna be heading our way and moving up into the Carolinas later tonight and into tomorrow morning. I mean, this is gonna have a huge impact on the, probably the morning commute for a lot of us, but it's going to end up producing some heavy rain. There are some strong storms embedded in here. Um, I don't think we have, currently have any warnings in there, but this is definitely one of the, one of the stronger little bands here moving into northern uh, Georgia and the upstate of South Carolina. To me, it's, it's the flash flood threat because if you look, this plume of moisture extends way down into the Gulf of Mexico and it's really going to be the, the area we watch. So you can see that deep moisture. And if we get into this area, there's going to be all kinds of flash flooding as this thing parks over us tomorrow afternoon. The upper low is kind of back in here and it's tracking up into the uh, the Great Lakes, but it's really this low and if you look close it looks like another low uh, might be trying to form down to the south. I wanted to take a look at the water vapor loop briefly because um, I'm trying to see if there's any more little lows. You see the little there is a little low down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Looks like there's one here and there's one in here. So there's some embedded waves along the front and these are always kind of can enhance the uh, the uh, rainfall rate. Here's today's severe weather risk. And again, this is not from the Storm Prediction Center. This is my own personal forecast. Uh, a moderate or medium risk of severe storms tomorrow. But really, here's the, the, the everything you need to know is really on this graphic right here, if you ask me. These are all the threats I expect tomorrow. Damaging winds, if some of the stronger storms develop, a low moderate risk of damaging winds. Hail, probably not gonna see any. Some isolated cells that could get going, could always produce hail, but this is a pretty warm tropical air mass, so hail less likely. Tornadoes, yeah, there's going to be a lot of shear tomorrow. We could see tornadoes east of Charlotte and eastern North Carolina, but the flood threat, by far the highest risk tomorrow and tomorrow night with the storm moving in. So let's look at some forecast information here. Uh, we'll kind of drag this uh, into the future here. I don't think I have any pauses in here, um, but we'll kind of advance this just a little bit and show you how things kind of advance here. See if I can pause it here somewhere. 5 a.m., 6 a.m., here comes the moisture. Look at this, in the middle of the day, we see some really heavy rain just kind of parking over us and then moving to moving off to the east. So to me, the, the, the threat of flooding is going to be our biggest issue between about 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. We've got that 12-hour window where we really could see some flooding issues. And this is the Futurecast rainfall forecast. And you can see this is just through 1.30. Uh, one to maybe as much as three inches in Boone, and then we go into the afternoon, look at these rainfall amounts, up to six inches in Rockingham. Now this has kind of been moving around because really, even at this early, late juncture, it's kind of hard to tell where the band will set up. If this band sets up here, could see four, five, six inches of rain. If the band sets up here, it could be four, five, six inches. But here's the thing to notice. Look at look it up in the, um, the timestamp there. 
This is through, this is basically a 24-hour forecast. Could you imagine six inches of rain falling in 24 hours? That's going to be a big problem. Then the system will move off to the east and move away from us. So while I don't want to downplay the severe weather risk with this system, I really want people to understand the flash flooding is the, the most impactful uh, uh, threat that we're going to see tomorrow. And if you live in a flash flood prone area or a flood prone area, please make sure you have a plan. You're ready to get to higher ground. Do not ever, 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 ever drive into standing water. You don't know how deep it is. The road could be gone. I look at these flood stats all the time and, you know, like 50, 60 percent of the people that drowned in flooding are in cars. And we say have this turnaround, don't drown campaign, but people still drive into water. So please, uh, please be careful. Do not drive into standing water. Of course, I'll have a full update tonight at 11. I'll keep things up to date tonight, tomorrow morning. If you follow me on social media, you know me. I'm on it 24-7. So you'll get it from me first before anybody else. And um, if anything should happen during the day tomorrow, we'll start doing cut-ins or breaking in or even live streaming. But I want to give you a quick update for folks head to bed. If you don't watch the 11, if not, tune in at 11. I'll have updated model runs of our future cast and any little changes um, that I see. If we see any changes tonight, I think it's going to be to speed up the timing of the rain and maybe up the totals a little bit. That's a quick update on what's going on. Hope you have a great night. If, uh, if you're going to bed, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. If not, I'll see you at 11 o'clock.